waiting for the ice to melt, you can gather the materials that you'll need for the thermos lab. You can find your thermometers. They come in the white boxes. You need two plastic deli containers that look like this, and you need to find the lids too. If you can't find the plastic containers in your kit, you can use two yogurt containers or cottage cheese containers, but they need to be the same size and shape. Yep. You'll also need some things to put around your thermos to insulate it. You can use things you find in your kit, or you can use things you find at home. This is a thermos, or more correctly, it's a vacuum bottle. This is a thermos, or more correctly, it's a vacuum bottle, which means the air between the inside and the outside has been sucked out. So there's no air in between the inside of the bottle and the outside of the bottle to transfer heat from the inside to the outside or the outside to the inside. Let me show you what I mean. In the winter, you might put hot chocolate in your vacuum bottle or brand name thermos. There's heat inside the vacuum bottle that, that wants to get out and become the same temperature the molecules inside the vacuum bottle want to become the same kinetic energy as the molecules outside the bottle. So the heat energy is trying to leave the bottle. It can't leave the bottle because there's no air molecules to carry the heat energy. So in this case, the heat will leave the vacuum bottle. In the summer, people use thermoses to keep things cool, like you might put lemonade in a vacuum bottle. In this case, you're trying to use this vacuum to keep heat from getting into your bottle. You don't want heat to transfer from the outside air to the inside where your lemonade is. You don't want the average kinetic energy here to be the same as the average kinetic energy here. But that's what the universe is trying to do to equalize the average kinetic energy of the molecules inside and outside the vacuum bottle. What the vacuum does is keep that heat from transferring as long as possible. In the first part of the lab, we looked at different things that would keep heat from transferring from the metal pan to the ice cube. We looked at aluminum foil, bubble wrap, and foam. You probably found that some of these things were better than others in insulating in preventing heat from going from the pan to the ice cube. It's the good insulators that we're looking for today when we want to build a thermos. Using the lab materials, I'm gonna build something like a vacuum bottle, but it's not going to be quite like it because I can't take all the air out. I'm gonna put six ice cubes in a small plastic container and stick that small plastic container in a larger container. In the space between where I have what would be my lemonade or my hot chocolate if it was a thermos, I'm going to put an insulator, something that's very poor at transferring heat from the outside to the inside. For my first thermos, I'm going to just take the bubble wrap that came in my kit, fold it up, and tuck it down between the cup with the ice cubes and the plastic deli container. Bubble wrap is mostly air, and air doesn't have many molecules in it compared to, say, ice. I'm going to keep working that bubble wrap in there. So mostly it's trapping air and not letting the air move between the cup with the ice and the outside. You can see I have my cup with ice, my bubble wrap, and a deli container here. This is the insulated container. Now I'm going to make a control where I put the same number of ice cubes. I'll use six. Put those inside the cup. You should have gotten a cup in with your kit. If not, just grab a plastic cup that fits inside your container. And then that's my control. I'm not going to have an insulating material in the space between there. And we're going to see how the results differ. Just like you put a lid on your thermos to keep heat from entering or exiting, I'm going to put a lid on my thermos here. 
but I want to be able to put a thermometer through my lid. So as you can see, I've cut a hole in this one and I'm going to stick my thermometer right through here and use a little bit of modeling clay that comes in your kit to seal the thermometer into my thermos. I'll cut a hole and put a thermometer in this one as well. Now that I have both of my thermometers set up with ice and the inside container and nothing between the ice and the outside container in my control, in, in my experimental setup, I put bubble wrap between the ice in the cup and the deli container on the outside. Once I have them set up, I'm going to give them five minutes so that the thermometer can t tell the true temperature inside my thermos. I'm going to set an extra thermometer outside here to record the temperature of the air. I'm going to wait five minutes and then I'll write down all the three of these temperatures on my lab sheet. Well, my stopwatch is counting up to five minutes while I'm waiting for my other two thermoses to equilibrate. I'm going to set up my extra credit thermos. I'm going to test another material that wasn't in the kit. I'm going to do it exactly the same way by adding six ice cubes. But I'm going to use a different material this time. This is a little bit of polar fleece. I'm going to stuff that down into my container and stuff my ice cubes right inside. Now you might be wondering, how does something that keeps you warm also keep ice cold? And that's a really good question. Before I cover up my ice cubes and put the lid on, I'll let you see. There's the cup with my ice cubes in it, and there's the polar fleece around the ice cube. Here's what your extra credit setup might look like if you want to use the materials that aren't in the kit. If you don't have something polar fleece, you could use wool socks or mittens or any kind of warm, fuzzy thing you might have around that will fit in a container. Remember, if you don't have these clear deli containers from your kit, you can use a yogurt or cottage cheese or some other bigger plastic container. Now that my stopwatch says five minutes, it's time to write down the temperature of the air on this thermometer and the temperature of the control and the experimental setup. In order to read the control and experimental setup, I'm going to have to take the clay off, take the thermometer out, look quickly what the temperature is, and stick it right back in. I'm going to write down what the temperature is on my lab sheet. I'm going to come back every 20 minutes and look at the temperature in both containers until the inside temperature in both of these containers matches the temperature of the air. I set my kitchen timer for 20 minutes so it'll beep every 20 minutes and I can remember to come and take the thermometers out very quickly and look at the temperature and put them back. You want to make sure that the, the thermometer is about the same amount into the container. You want to make sure everything about these two containers are the same except what's between the cup and the outside deli container. You can see that both my thermometers are about the same depth into the container. I have the same number of ice cubes and they're the same size. It's important that we keep everything the same except what we're experimenting with. What's the insulator in this case? My timer is about to go off so it's time to record the temperatures in both containers now that 25 minutes have, el have elapsed. I'm going to write down the time on my stopwatch as 25 minutes in my data table here where it says time and I just put stopwatch to remind myself I was supposed to look at my stopwatch. Then I'm going to write down the air temperature on my thermometer on the counter. The temperature in the control thermos, that's the one without anything in between the ice and the outside container and the temperature in the experimental thermos. That's the one with the bubble wrap if you're just working with the materials from the kit. Or if you're working for extra credit in my class, it's whatever you put between the ice and the outside container.